Man City against Barcelona. Yes. Because it's just been announced that Aguero was not out for a month. He's out now for two months. Yep. This is the thing that you and I have talked about, that we can judge these match by match. It's very difficult to judge the overall winners because anything can happen down the road to an injury to a player. They can, and uh, obviously Kun Aguero is a key player for, for Manchester City, and likewise Lionel Messi is a key player, as we've seen, for Barcelona. And I, I made the point, have they got a plan B or a plan C when they haven't got Messi? And they tried to use a plan B. The next game they played was uh, it was uh, Ajax away. They were poor. I commentated on the match. Didn't play well. Deservedly lost to uh, Ajax. The following game was, and I tipped them as well on Sky Sports, I tipped them to lose to Bilbao. And they lost to Bilbao by one goal. M- Munyain scored the only goal. And he should have scored another one earlier than that. They had a couple of chances torqued. Torquay had a, a a chance to head the ball in from point blank and missed it. So they were really disappointing. So without Messi, they're not the same side. They rely heavily on Alexis and Pedro, their pace. And the, mo- the one that's come through and, and impressed me in the last few games has been Neymar, the Brazilian boy. He's looked very quick and he's scoring some goals. He got his first Champions League goals there in the last game against Celtic. So he's a handful, but at the back, I think they're awful. They're really poor. They, they don't defend well. PK and Mascherano are not a good partnership. And uh, I think Bart is probably better as a centre half than Mascherano, but he hasn't got the experience. So that's a that's a problem for them. And the coach isn't interested in signing a centre half, and that's why I fancy Manchester City to win that tie. But yeah, the interesting thing, whenever you look at City against Barcelona, you say Barcelona are poor in defence, and yet if you look at their record, they concede less goals than Manchester City, who can score for fun, yes. but concede an awful lot. Yes, but one of the problems is Vincent Kompany, who was the best centre-back in the Premier League last year for me, he's been injured on and off for, for part of the season. And I think with him back in the centre of defence, they're going to look a lot more solid. Um, they're, they're a very, very good all-round side. Yaya Toure, back to his old club, he's a monster. He's, he's unplayable on, a, on the day and uh, I've seen him playing a few games this season where I just thought I felt sorry for the midfield player trying to stop him or trying to play alongside him because he's just big, strong technically he's good he can do it all he can score goals so he's going to relish going back to Barcelona and this you know, this is the disappointing side of it from a Man City's point of view the la- the second leg is away to Barcelona See, I think that's key that, that, that's it could, be, it could be key that, that's why I'm, I'm still going with Barcelona it's interesting that uh, in the space of a, a few, few short weeks or a couple of months Barcelona now people are going oh I tip City I tip City I tip City mm-hmm. suddenly they've gone from a team that nobody could beat and now suddenly Man City who this is, is this a match the City side who lost to Cardiff? Yeah, but that was that was many many <laughs> months ago, many months ago, and and, and that's their, their problem. If they if their away form in the Premier League was anywhere near their home form, they'd be five or six points clear of Arsenal now. There's no, no no doubt about that. They've been disappointing away from home, but that's something that Pellegrini knows that he needs to sort out. I also think that Pellegrini, knowing Barcelona from his days at Villarreal and Malaga and, and Real Madrid. He will know this Barcelona side inside out, and all the players that play played in Spain: Negredo, um, Navas, Kun Aguero, uh, D- David Silva. They they know these players, and they know how to beat them. And I feel that th- that's an edge that they've got. Tata Martino's never done a Champions League before. He's an Argentinian who's did all his football in Argentina, and I think that's going to be significant as well. I think Pellegrini's got more knowledge of the Champions League than he has. It's going to be some game. There. It's going to be a great game. That's the pick of the bunch, I think. That's the big, like big it's one. A, it's a game really to look yeah. at. It doesn't, it, even, if you're not even interested in sport, it's a great game to be looking for. Well, I'm, I'm waiting and on... By the time the hype comes around, it's going to be incredible. I'm waiting on my producer to phone me to tell me which of these games I'm going to be commentating and you're on. And you're praying I'm one. praying it's that one. Well, you <laughs> should be because you know them back. It's interesting now that Manchester City, they're odds just for the home match. The City are 13-8 currently with McLean's and Barcelona are 6-4. to four. Is that about right? It is probably about right, you know, especially on the form. But again, watch what's happening in terms of injuries over the next two months. That is so important. We've discussed it. I've told you it before, mm-hmm. Logie, honestly. Injuries to players, if they haven't got a strong squad and they're missing key players like a Messi or an Aguero, it can have a massive effect on it. I think he's a great player. Yeah.